The sea has always been an important source of Japan's food supply. And since ancient times, her fishing fleets have been her greatest industry. In normal times, her fishermen bring in one-fourth of the world's fish products. But the end of the war found almost half the fleet sunk or out of commission. And what was left was in harbor for lack of fuel and equipment. Occupation authorities put fishing high on the list of industries needing help. And once more, the coastal waters around Japan are filled with vessels carrying fishermen who comb the sea for one of the most important staples in the Japanese diet. Japan's textile industry, including its famed silk mills, was one of the first industries to be revived. Today, although it has been hampered by diminishing markets, textiles make up nearly half of Japan's exports. Japan's heavy industry began to grow, such as the shipbuilding industry, which revived the nation's merchant fleet to carry Japan's exports into the world markets. This industrial rebirth was spurred not only by American aid, but also by Japan's own affinity for industrialization. Since the 19th century, Japan has been mastering the techniques of industrial production, matching the best records produced during the Industrial Revolution in the West. This ability once made Japan the strongest nation in all Asia, but the war set her back some 10 years behind the West in industrial techniques. She suffered from old plants and equipment and lack of contact with technical advances elsewhere in the world. But with American help, she started to catch up. Not only government help, but private American investment as well has helped Japan in this effort. Some of the United States' leading industrial enterprises, encouraged by investment incentives, have developed a private technical assistance program which is aiding Japan immeasurably. And once again, Japan is ahead of every other nation in Asia in knowledge of mass production methods. Japan became particularly important to the United States when the communist armies shook the stability of the Far East by marching on South Korea in the summer of 1950. When the free world promptly met the challenge, Japan became the base from which the United Nations directed its campaign to halt aggression. It was now that the real test of Japan's friendship for the United States came. Occupation troops left Japan for the fighting zone. At one point, every major tactical unit had left Japan. In many military occupations, this would be a dangerous situation, signaling the opportunity for uprising among the occupied people. But in Japan, there was no disturbance. The occupation proved a success. Without Japanese bases from which to move troops and equipment, the prosecution of the Korean campaign would have been much more difficult indeed. 